everyone. My name is Caroline Bowen, and I am one of the lead youth program naturalists at Campfire Minnesota. In our first video lesson, we will be creating seed sculptures. These are small creations made by molding wet paper with seeds and giving them time to dry, and eventually planting them in soil. Hopefully through this, you'll get the chance to watch your seed grow into a beautiful flower. When making seed sculptures, there are a few materials that you'll need. First, you'll need some sort of paper, which can either be recycled paper, notebook paper, or colored paper. Seeds that you can get either in packets from the grocery store or from vegetables at your home. You'll need a large bowl for mixing all of your materials together. You'll need a blender to blend your paper and water, a plate to dry your seed sculptures on, and also an optional cookie cutter to make shapes with your mold. For the setting of our project, it's great if you have the option to be in a kitchen. We're going to be working with a blender, which we would traditionally use in a kitchen. And then um, eventually, if you have the option to go outside, um, when we're playing with our paper and mixing with the water and molding it, um, it's great to be outside in the sunshine um, and also to keep your mess outdoors. Um, so our first step for our project is going to be taking that recycled paper that we have and tearing it up into small pieces. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to eventually put it inside that blender. So it's great to have pretty small pieces um, that are going to be blendable. And then in the end you should have a large bowl of paper that looks like this. For step number two, we are going to be mixing water into our bowl of paper. Um, and with, with the size that I have, I'm using a little over a cup of water, which you can just pour over your paper. Now you can take some time to mix your paper and water together and play with it a little bit. You might be wondering, why make seed sculptures when we can plant seeds directly into the ground? This activity can be a great way to grow a nature connection with your seeds through holding and playing with them, while also getting to craft something new and creative. And if you don't want to plant it yourself, your seed sculpture can be a wonderful gift for family or friends. So for our next step, we are going to take all of that paper and water that we mixed together and played with, and we are going to put it into a food processor or an enclosed blender. And with this step, I need you to make sure that you have an adult who's helping you um, so we're going to put that all into our, our processor, um, close it, and just blend away. So now we have our mixture of um, paper, seeds, and water blended together. Um, and we're on to our fourth step, which is adding our seeds. So what you can do is you can press down your blend, and you can add in whatever seeds you like. Um, I'm using pickling cucumber seeds. Um, you can pour those onto your mix mixture and then just play with it some more. Um, and you can kind of blend it together, kind of like Play-Doh, um, and mix those seeds in. And then really just create whatever shapes that you like. As I'm making my seed shapes, I am going to freestyle a little bit at the beginning and then also show you how to work with the cookie cutter if you like. Let's also talk a little bit about seed dispersal. Once dropped from a flower, seeds disperse or travel in many ways, by gliding in the wind, floating in water, bursting, being consumed by animals, especially birds, and traveling with humans. In working with our seeds, we're practicing human seed dispersal. Because of this, you can find many different types of seeds that are both native and non-native in your grocery store, backyard, garden, and a local park. When a plant is native, this means that it exists in a space naturally and did not involve humans moving its seeds. Non-native seeds were moved by humans from the area they originated to a new spot. This is why we can enjoy local strawberries, first made in France, or watermelon that originated in West Africa, all grown in local gardens. In this case, it has been beneficial for seeds to move around the world because we get to enjoy them. For my seed sculpture, I'm going to work with a heart-shaped cutout that I hope to plant in my local community garden. As we think about planting a non-native species like a cucumber, it's also important to remember that there are negative forms of seed dispersal. This happens when non-native plants become invasive and take over the local plant population. We can be mindful of this and plant in small and controlled spaces like garden beds and not in local forests.
our last step is going to be letting your seed sculpture dry for about 24 hours on your plate or your rack and then you're ready to plant it. So as far as planting, the location should have enough sunlight, water, and good soil for your plant to grow nice and strong. Um, and I chose the spot right here in our community garden. So here we go. Thank you so much for being a part of this lesson with me today. If you created something and you want to post it to social media, you can hashtag MyNatureConnection or tag Campfire Minnesota. Please continue to look to our website for more videos and written lesson plans. Um, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy out there and you continue to explore with us from home.